Special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Rusberg for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Kirito before here bringing you another Minecraft Cold War aircraft tutorial. In this tutorial we go ahead and build the Illusion IL-28. The Illusion IL-28, known by the NATO reporting name of Beagle, is a jet bomber of the immediate post-war period that was originally manufactured for the Soviet Air Forces. It was the Soviet Union's first such aircraft to enter large-scale production. It was also licensed and built in China as the Harbin H-5. Total production in the USSR was about 6,300 aircraft, and over 319 H-5s were built. Only 187 examples of the HJ-5 training variant were manufactured. In the 1990s, hundreds remained in service with various air forces over 50 years after the IL-28 IL first appeared. The only H-5s in service currently are approximately 80 aircraft which operate with the Korean People's Air Force. The IL-28 has the USAF slash DOD reporting name Type 27 and NATO reporting name Beagle, while the IL-28U trainer variant has the US Air Force slash DOD reporting name of Type 30 and the NATO reporting name of Mascot. So yeah, this right here is our um, IL-28 design, a very interesting uh, designed aircraft and really kind of encapsulates that um, you know, post World War II, very early Cold War type design um, of kind of just having that nice gray, sleek looking aircraft with um, basically the new introduction of jet engines. So overall, pretty interesting build, and one that will make an awesome addition to any of your worlds as a uh, nice kind of early Soviet medium bomber. Uh, before we go ahead and move into taking a look at the build, I do want to go ahead and give a special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more you already do, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions where you can go ahead and post a small amount to the channel every month, and in doing so, earn a viewer request you're choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel. It's really greatly appreciated, so definitely feel free to check that out. Again, link will always be in my video descriptions. With that though, let's go ahead and dive in here to take a look at the aircraft. For this tutorial, we will have both a in-flight and landed version, so you'll have both those available to you to uh, add into your worlds. Um, but basically start off with the uh, main design here. Uh, we have the glass tip nose here, which was present on the earlier, I think the later IL-28s actually removed this glass canopy here, but this is uh, designed to be one of the earlier models. As we move back, we have the cockpit here. Um, typically a, I believe it was just a one-seater if I remember correctly, could be a two-seater actually. Uh, we have the number on the side of the aircraft, um, the wings with the jet engines here, um, as we progress back, we have the cabling that runs back to the tail. Uh, of course, the iconic red stars there on the side of the rear of the fuselage. And like most Cold War bombers in the early stages, this does have a tail gunner position as well. And that right there is pretty much the aircraft. Uh, pretty simple, straightforward one, but one that, again, is going to make an awesome addition to any of your worlds. It's an earlier, early Cold War build, and even as a um, Chinese build, and <laughs> it's even used today by some uh, countries such as uh, North Korea. Uh, but yeah, really nice looking build, and obviously we have the landed version here as well, so you'll have both those at your disposal um, by the end of the tutorial. So with that though, let's go ahead and move into our tutorial by beginning with our first layer. Alright guys, moving into our first layer here, we'll be going ahead and begin with layer number 3. Now we're going to start with layer 3 because layer 3 gives us a better baseline to kind of build off of, and will make it easier to add layers 1 and 2 on, which are really just kind of a few little things that are going to come off of what we have here for layer uh, number one so uh that's kind of the earlier number three i should say uh that's right there is going to kind of cover that um in addition if you're completely new to my aircraft tutorials the way i like to charge these tutorials i like to do half on camera half off what this means is i'm building the entire star line of the aircraft in the right side it will be up to you guys to take the right side and copy it over to the left side this aircraft is completely symmetrical for the most part so whatever we do on one side will be done on the other side unless i stay otherwise um with that all out of the way, also, if you do want to build the landed version, we will be adding the landing gear on at the end of the video as a modification. So what this will mean for you is you'll need to make sure that you build this aircraft a certain height off the ground. Layer 3 here is going to sit on the third layer up from the ground level. So we have 1, 2, and then you have layer 3 here, so you uh, basically layer 3 up from the ground level. Uh, so very important to make sure that's correct when you're building this because when you go back and add the land gear it will not sit correctly if you do not have this the height, right high off the ground. So just take that into account and make sure you're tracking that. Anyways, let's get started here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and place down a long row of polished anisite. This is going to be going down the center line here of your aircraft. It's going to be a length of 23. We're going to go then go to the direction we want the front of our aircraft. So we're going to have our front face this way. We're going to place down two pistons upside down. Now if you're on a different version other than Java, 
I would recommend instead of the two pistons, placing it on a polished anisite upside down stair and a polished anisite top slab instead as an alternative. Um, but again, the pistons here are going to be best, and the pistons are going to be used for us Java players because we do have a uh, special tool that we'll be using on this to kind of change the properties of them. So uh, just keep that in mind moving forward. Anyways, after that, we're going to go ahead and place down an Arabic top slab. Go into the rear of our row 23. We're going to go ahead and then place down two more pistons. This again can be replaced with two polished anisite top slabs instead. Then after those blocks, we're going to place down one, two, three, four polished anisite full blocks and then a anisite wall there on the end. After that, we're going to start working our way out to the sides. Starting off the front here, we're going to go ahead and go to the side of these two pistons. We're going to place down two skeleton skulls. And then we're going to go ahead and place down one and two light gray stainless panes. After that, we want to go and then take our anisite stairs. We're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen. Anisite stairs back. And then one, two, three, and four light gray stainless panes back. One, two skeleton skulls. One, two light gray stainless panes. And one, two skeleton skulls going back along the side of the aircraft like so. After that's done, that's going to do it for our fuselage, and we're going to go ahead and start working our way out to the engines. For this, we're going to go ahead and go back to our sixth polished anisite stair. So, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And we want to build out one, two, three, and four blocks. So, one, two, three, and four blocks out to the side. We're going to go then place down a polished anisite upside down stair. We're going to go then place down an iron trap door, come off the back of the stair. And we then want to place down another polished anisite stair, <coughs> coming off that iron trap door like that. We're going to then go back from those stairs with one more stair going back on both sides and then a iron bar in the space in between those stairs. We then want to place down a polished anisite block to both sides and we will at this point grab black concrete and place black concrete behind that iron bar. We're going to go then place down a total of four rows of three of polished anisite across. So one, two, three, and four. So again, four rows of three. We're going to go ahead and place down a polished anisite block in the center, followed by an upside down polished anisite stair to both sides. And then we want to go and go one, two, three full blocks down the center. And then one, two, three stairs coming off those full blocks. So one, two, three. This first stair here should turn into a corner stair. And then you have three of the normal upside down stairs going back. We then want to go ahead and grab our pistons here. We're going to place down two pistons upside down, like so, going back. And then to the side there of those pistons, we're going to place down two skeleton skulls. Then after that, we want to place down a polished anisite top slab. And then an iron trap door come off that top slab. And after we have that all done, that right there is going to pretty much wrap up what we have here for this layer. Taking a look at it from above here, this is what it should look like from the top down view. At this point in time, also for us Java players, I'd like to go ahead and take some time to go ahead and refer you to a handy tool we'll be using throughout this build. This right here will be the debug stick. To get this stick, you'll need to go ahead and type in the command slash give space at p minecraft colon debug underscore stick uh, this is right here is your command by pressing enter it will give you this debug stick now what's cool about this debug stick is we can actually go these glass panes and we can actually have them connect up to the skeleton skull and the stair here without even uh, having a full block for them to connect up to by doing this you need to go ahead and left click on your glass pane and you need to find the direction that they're facing so for us when we go ahead and have our position, position set to north, it will say it's false, and we can go ahead and right click it and it will extend it toward the stair. And this might take some messing around with to get, make sure you get that right. Uh, but you can go ahead and do this to each one of your glass panes here to extend them toward the skeleton skulls like that along the side here. And then since that way is north, the other way is going to be south. So we'll go ahead and find selected south, and we can extend the glass pane forward like that. And again, your directions might be east to west, so just keep that in mind. It all really just depends on the orientation of your aircraft and how that's oriented. But you can see here by just messing around with it a little bit and connecting these glass panes up to um, basically those blocks, they, they really kind of help flush out the shape of the aircraft a lot better as compared to just having those uh, gaps that were left there. So a nice little trick there for us shallow players to kind of create a cool um, design there and kind of help flush out that design a little bit better. Anyways, though, that is going to complete everything we have there for layer 3, and with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into layers 1 and 2. Alright guys, so moving into our next layers, we have layers 1 and 2. These layers here are pretty simple to go ahead and uh, do. What we're going to do here is we're going to go to the bottom of the aircraft, we're going to count back our polished anisite blocks, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. In your 6th one, we're going to place down a polished anisite upside down stair. We then want to place down two polished anisite full blocks back, uh, a piston upside down if you are in, if you're on um, Java. And then after that, uh, we want to go ahead and then place down 
a polished andesite top slab. Um, again, also for this piston, instead you can place down polished andesite upside down stair if you don't have pist or if you don't have the uh, debug stick. And then after that uh, top slab, they're gonna place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten iron trap doors back like so. And on the very end here, we're gonna place down two iron trap doors, come out those two polished andesite blocks. After that's complete, go back up here to this little bump on the bottom of the fuselage. We're gonna go and go to the sides. We're gonna place down a skeleton skull to the side of the stair. And then we want to go and then place down one and two, like race thing must paints, and then a skeleton skull come off the side of this block here. Again, using our debug stick for us shallow players, we can go ahead and actually extend the glass pane um, like so in the directions like that to go ahead and kind of flush out that design there a little bit. Again, just a nice little trick there for us Java players. And also this piston right here, by going up to it and right-clicking it, we will go ahead and get rid of that wooden portion which helps with the shaping there on the side of the aircraft. One thing to note though is when you do that, uh, you will uh, basically make the piston uh, vulnerable to if you update any blocks around the space of that piston, it will revert back to its original state. So just keep that in mind uh, when you kind of progress forward to not really touch the piston or else you have to re-debug stick it. Um, anyways, after that's done, we're going to go and then go to the back here of the aircraft. We want to go ahead and go off this glass pane here, and we're going to place down a block like this, and then one out to the side here. We're going to delete this first block, and we're going to place down a skeleton skull on the side of the block like so. We're going to delete this block, and then going down from the pist or from the skeleton skull, we're going to place down another block, and our skeleton skull to the side there of that block. Delete that block, and then we're just going to place down an iron, or sorry, an end rod coming off that skeleton skull like so. After that, we just have basically the engines to work on now, and for the engines here, pretty simple. We're just going to go ahead and place down uh, two iron trap doors on the bottom here, so one, two. Then a row of one, two, three, four, five polished andesite top slabs. And we then want to go ahead and place down two more iron trap doors after that row. And then going off the middle, three polished andesite top slabs, so we're just going to place down three iron trap doors like that to the sides. And with that all complete there, that is going to wrap up everything we have there for uh, layers 1 and 2. And with that, that will bring us on up to moving up to layer number 4. Alright guys, moving into our next layer, we'll be moving into layer number 4. For layer 4 to get started with here, uh, we're going to place down a um, black stained glass block on top of this narrow brick top slab here. And then another uh, black stained glass uh, full block going forward like so. After those two blocks, we're going to place down a black concrete block. Now this right here is just going to help kind of close off the inside from being able to see, be visible from the outside. There really isn't much room for interior space so we're just going to kind of go ahead and close this completely off, um, fill the aircraft in. You can obviously modify it and make a little bit of interior for yourself if you want but again there's just really not a lot of space for what we have here in the front of the aircraft. Anyways though, after that black concrete block we're going to go and then take our polished data site and we're going to place down a long row of polished data site. That's going to go all the way back to the tail here which is in total going to be 30 blocks long. We're going to go then place down an upside down polished andesite stair, and then we're going to place down two dark oak defense gates coming off that stair like so, and they'll be opened up toward the stair itself. So just like that there for the tail gun. After that's done, moving up to the front, we're going to go and start working our way out to the sides. We're going to place down two black stained glass panes here, then one, two andesite walls, and then uh, one polished andesite block. Coming off this polished andesite block, we're going to place down a skeleton skull, and then a end rod coming off that skeleton skull going forward. Continuing back from that polished dance block, we're going to place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20 blocks back. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 andesite walls. And then 1, 2, 3, and 4 like gray stained glass panes like that going back. And um, after that's done there, again for us debug stick people, we can go ahead and actually alter this glass pane here so it connects up to that stair. So it kind of makes the back here, again, look a little bit more connected, um, which I think just overall makes a better appearance on the back here. So again, you can see there it just kind of helps shape the back there a little bit better. Um, anyways, though, after that's all done, we're going to go then grab our iron trapdoors. We're going to go to our fourth from last polished dance I block here, so toward the back here. This fourth one, we're going to go and then place down an iron trapdoor coming off of it, followed by one, two, three, and four iron trapdoors toward the front. We then want to place down another row of five of iron trapdoors across, followed by a third row, and then a fifth row of iron trapdoors going across like so. At this point in time, we're going to take our polished and full blocks. We're going to place down one, two, three blocks. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now toward the back here, we're going to place down two polished and blocks on top of those two pistons there. We're going to go then take our and walls. We're going to place down two and walls here to the sides, like so. Then uh, we want to place down a black 
stained glass or a black concrete block here in the center. You like gray stained glass paint at both sides. And then at this point in time, we're going to go ahead and then place down a block here in the center. And then coming off the sides of this block, we're going to place down an iron trap door. We'll then delete this block. And using our debug stick here, we can go ahead and left click the iron trap door until we get selected open false. Pop up on screen by right clicking it, it'll set open true and it'll set those to sit vertically like that. Now, if you do not have access to a debug stick, you can go ahead and use Birchwood Trapdoors as an alternative for this situation. Also, with a debug stick for us Java players, we can go ahead and actually extend the um, glass pane here back a little bit like that just to help kind of create a little bit better flow there for the engine and kind of help with its overall shaping. And then lastly, we're just going to go ahead and take a stone button on the back here and place down a stone button there like so. Now, that's it for the back section. Going toward the forward section, we're going to place down three polished anti blocks, another three. And then a third row of three going forward. We're going to then place down a row of black concrete across, then a polished anisite block here in the center. Um, on both sides of that polished anisite block, we're going to place down an iron bar. And we want to go and then go to the side here of the black concrete block and the iron bar. Same thing over here. And we're also going to do the same thing right here, just like this. Now, at this point in time, again, we can use our debug stick there to close those, or we can use birch wood trap doors, basically whatever you did on the back there. Um, we will have to, if we're using iron trap doors with the, with the uh, debug stick, we will have to go ahead and extend the iron bars here manually. So just like this, and you can use your debug stick there to extend them to connect up to those iron trap doors, just like you did for the glass panes down there. And then lastly, we just want to place down a skeleton skull here. And just to make it a little bit more thicker, um, basically rim around the engine here we're going to place down iron trap doors here again and use our debug stick to stick there to close them like that to make that a little bit more thicker around the intake and you can also uh, again use birchwood trap doors whichever trap doors you've been using for the build anyways though with that all complete there that's going to basically wrap up what we have here for this layer just trying to make sure i'm not missing anything and everything does appear to be good to go so that right there will conclude what we have here for layer number four for the build and actually, also for us Java players, we can go to the pistons now on the bottom of the aircraft and right click them like so to go ahead and set them to that state there. And once you kind of take a look back at these pistons here and just kind of see the way they help shape the aircraft, you kind of see why we use them. They're really nice uh, shaping tools for us um, and just kind of gain the, the best shape we possibly can. Anyway, so that right there is going to conclude what we have there for um, layer number uh, four and with that let's move on to layer number five. All right guys, so going ahead and moving on to our next layer We have layer five for layer five to be able to go ahead and place down a daylight detector Turn this to night mode on top of that second black stained glass full block We're gonna go then place down a polished inside slab followed by a piston Or a polished inside stair either one will work then two polished inside full blocks We're gonna go and then close off the cockpit by placing out a row of five of black concrete This right here will be your cockpit space However, we're going to close this space off. Um, again, you can leave the space open if you do want to do an interior for yourself. After that, though, we're going to go then take our polished anisite blocks. We're going to go and do a long row of polished anisite, going all the way toward the back here. In total, a row of 22 blocks. Then a polished anisite stair here on the very back. After that's done, moving back up to the front, we're going to go ahead and start working our way out to the sides. Coming off the side of the piston here, we're going to place down a skeleton skull. Then one and two, like Ray Stingless Pain's back. We're going to go then place down one, two, three, four, five, six or sorry, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, um, and a site stairs in total. Just gonna double check our count here. And it is gonna be 10 stairs in total. We're gonna go and then place down one, two, three, four, five polished anisite blocks, then one, two polished anisite stairs, then one, two, three, four, like race stainless paints, two skeleton skulls, one, two, three, four, like race stainless paints after that going back. Then after we have that all done there, uh, we're going to go and then grab ourselves polished anisite blocks and we're going to place down uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Come off the side here and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. At this point, uh, we're going to go ahead and then fresh shallow players will take pistons. We're going to place down a row of four of pistons on the front here. So just like this. Um, if you're not on Java, you can go ahead and use polished anisite stairs instead. So a row of polished anisite stairs like that across instead. Um, but for us, we'll use the pistons. After that, we're going to go then place down two polished dance, or sorry, three polished dance blocks across. Then two blocks going forward down the center, two stairs on the sides. And then we're going to place down a black concrete block here in the center, followed by another polished dance stair to both sides. Then a um, iron bar in the center, a polished dance stair again to both sides. Then one more stair going forward. And then we're just going to place down a 
iron uh, trapdoor there in the center, like so. And that right there will kind of help form the front there of our engine. And then going toward the back here, we're going to go and take our pistons again. And um, instead of the pistons here, you can use slabs. Most likely will probably be your best bet. Uh, we're going to place down one, two, three, four pistons across. And then in our row four, like this across. We're going to go and then take our polished inside slabs. Place down one, two, three, four. And then our daylight detectors, which will be one, two, three, four as well. And we'll go ahead and right click those to turn those to the night mode. And we can go and then just place down two iron trap doors coming off those daylight detectors. So one, two, like that. After that's done, we're going to go and take our polished dance We're going to place down two more rows of three coming off those rows of pistons. We're going to place down one block in the center. Polished dance stayed stared at both sides of that block. And we then want to place down two pistons going down the center here. This can be replaced with a polished andesite stair and then a polished andesite slab instead. And then we're going to place down another slab right here and then a iron trap door after that slab. After that's done, we want to go and then take our skeleton skulls. We go to the side here of these pistons and we're just going to place down skeleton skulls like that on both sides. At this point in time, we can go ahead and take our debug stick for us shower players and we can go ahead and just right click all these pistons to go ahead and set them to this uh, state like that to help with our shaping there for the aircraft. As well as you can also go to the glass panes and extend them in the directions here like we did before. Um, so just kind of help extend them toward our glass panes here. Or our skeleton schools and our stairs just to kind of help make the aircraft kind of look a little bit more flush overall. So um, we're not going to do this one on the very end there but we'll go ahead and do the rest of these. And as you can see it just helps overall with the shaping there of the aircraft. Um, I will have her add a skeleton skull on both sides of that um, stair there on the back. Uh, but anyways, once that's all done right there, uh, we're going to go ahead and start working on our section of the wing that actually sticks basically off the aircraft, or off the engine here. And to begin with this, uh, we want to go ahead and grab our polished nanosite full blocks here, and we're going to place down a row four. So kind of going in line with this row here, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, coming off that row. Now toward the front here, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with our pistons. We're going to place down four pistons, like so, going across. And then behind this row, it's going to be a little bit, um, a little bit different. Uh, we're going to place down two pistons. I'll be right here on the inside, and we want to go and then switch to a polished andesite full block, and then a polished andesite top slab. Now, after that's done, uh, we want to go and then place down a row of one, two, three polished andesite slabs across, and then we're going to place down a top slab here. And then after that, uh, we're going to go and take our daylight detectors. We're going to place down one and two daylight detectors here, turn those to night mode, and that right there will kind of form this section here. Now at this point in time, basically the rest of this is going to be top slabs. So we're going to take our polished inside top slabs, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, going across the side there like that. Then our next section here is going to be a row of four, so one, two, three, four, and then an iron trap door. And we then want to go ahead and do one, two, three, and then an iron trap door. Then after that we want to go and do one, two, two iron trap doors, one, two, two iron trap doors. And then uh, after that, we just want to go ahead and then do uh, two rows of four out to the side. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four iron trap doors. And after that, uh, we can go ahead and then take our uh, debug stick and just go ahead and right click our pistons like so to go ahead and uh, get them in that state like that and that right there is going to pretty much wrap that up Also, we have the piston here on the front, which will also go ahead and right click as well uh, But anyways that right there is going to basically complete this layer for the most part the wings are done And this which should look like from the top down view with that all complete that's going to wrap up layer Or that's going to wrap up the main structure for this layer a few things also I want to mention for this layer is going to be the um, numbering and the star there on the back so the numbering on this aircraft is pretty straightforward I'm not going to show you guys how to make these banners exactly as there are plenty tutorials out there that will show you guys how to make these numbered banners but basically we have a three digit number on the side of the aircraft on the left side here it starts on the first stair and then we just have our three banners over here on this side we're going to go ahead and basically do the same thing so we want to make sure that the number reads left right so we have 399 as our aircraft number and over here we have 399 position in the same position on both sides and they both read left to right on both sides so that right there is pretty much um, it for the numbers on the aircraft and there are plenty of tutorials again out there that will help you um, make those uh, number banners if you, you know, are not sure how to make them. 
Then uh, we also have the Soviet star on the back here. Now this banner here is a little bit more complex, so I am going to go ahead and show you guys how to make this one exactly. So let me go and grab the materials here, and I'll see you guys here shortly. All right, guys, so when it comes to making that uh, Soviet red star that we have there on the side of the aircraft, you'll need a loom, a red banner, two red dye, four light gray dye, and a banner pattern. Uh, this banner pattern is going to be the flower charge. We're going to start off by going into our loom. We're going to place down our red banner and our light gray dye. We're going to go ahead and do the line horizontally through the center there like so. We'll grab this banner, place it back into our loom, remove the light gray dye, place our red dye instead, and then our flower charge. This right here is going to create a symbol that looks like this. We'll grab that banner, place it back into our loom, remove the flower charge uh, pattern, and also replace our dye with light gray. We're going to do the horizontal line across the top like so, grab that banner, place it back into our loom, and we're going to go and then place down our red dye into the loom. We're going to go and then do a diamond shape, like so. That will create this. As you can see, the top half of the star is pretty much done. we we'll grab that banner, put it back into our loom, and add our light gray dye back. We're going to do the triangle from the bottom for our light gray dye, and we then want to do the horizontal line that goes across the bottom here, this lower third, like so. And with that, you have your banner created. This banner here, pretty simple. We'll just go ahead and go onto this um, light gray stained glass paint right here. And that'll be on both sides there of the fuselage of the aircraft. Do make sure to hold on to this because this will be used uh, later on in the build, uh, basically on the tail of the aircraft. So just make sure you keep this on standby or you're able to just come up and grab it later. But uh, yeah, that right there is that little red star banner there for the Soviet markings. Anyways though, that is going to conclude everything we have there for layer 5. And with that, we'll move on up to our next layer, layer number six moving into our next layer we have layer six for layer six to go ahead and get started with you're going to place down an iron trap door on top of this polished anisite block right here we're going to go then place down an air brick slab back from it two black stained glass blocks a polished anisite block a narrow black stained glass block a polished anisite slab an iron trap door and then a barrier block uh, right here after that iron trap door now going to the sides here we're going to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull at a slight angle on the side there of that um or on top of the stair. We're going to go then place down two black stained glass panes and then a light gray stained glass pane. We're going to go then place down a skeleton skull here and then a skeleton skull at a slight angle right next to that stair like so. Again, for us Java players, we'll go ahead and use our debug stick here. So we can go ahead and grab that again and actually extend our glass panes out to these sides here. So just kind of the same thing that we've been doing throughout the build so it's like that to kind of expand our cockpit a little bit better and then on this barrier block here we're going to go ahead and place down a stone button only on the left side so we're just going to place down a button on the left side there and not the right side so just like that after that going to the tail of the aircraft we're going to go, ahead and go to this last polished anti block we're going to place down a black stained glass block on top of it followed by one black stained glass block going back we then want to place down one two three four polished anti blocks then we're going to place down a piston like so then an air polished anisite slab and a iron, iron trap door, just like that. After that's all complete, we then want to go ahead and place down um, a polished anis or a barrier block that's going to be coming off this uh, piston here to the left side and the left side only. And we're going to have a button coming off the side there of that barrier block going forward. Then on both sides here, we're going to place down two iron trap doors, then two light gray stainless panes, two black stainless panes going back. And then after that, we're going to take our iron trap doors, we're going to place down one coming off this one, then one, two, three back, and then one, two, coming off those two iron trap doors there in the center. And this right there is going to kind of help start to form up our tail there of the aircraft. And just to make sure I'm not missing anything, I was correct in we are not going to, we're only going to have the barrier block over here on the left side. After that though, uh, this piston here, we can go ahead and also uh, revert back to its normal state, or to its uh, modded state, using our debug stick like so. Anyways though, uh, with that all finished, we then have our engines here, and our engines, we're going to go ahead and take our iron trap doors, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven iron trap doors along there like so. Then for our wings, um, pretty simple, we're just going to go ahead and cover up the iron trap doors here with light gray carpet like so, and we do want to go ahead and place down one red carpet that will be located on the fourth top side from the end here so this one like so so we'll just place down our red carpet like that and we basically have our wings all complete and with that that is going to sum up everything we have there for layer number six and with that we'll probably be moving into our last final layers here of our in-flight model of the aircraft so with that let's move on to our last layers
Alright guys, moving into our final layers here, we have layers 7 through 12. For these layers to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a stone button on top of this black concrete block, or black stained glass block I should say, then a dark oak with trapdoor back, and then a lever like so. After that's done, going back from the lever, we're going to place down 1, 2, 3, and 4 um, barrier blocks. On the side of the first two barrier blocks, we're going to place down two, or sorry, um, on the side of the first three barrier blocks, we're going to place down three buttons. On the tops of the last two, we're going to place down two buttons on top. Going back from that last button, we're going to place down a row of six of barrier blocks. On the side of the first three barrier blocks, we're going to go and place down three stone buttons, again only to the left side here. And then on the next uh, row of three, we're going to place down three buttons on top. We're going to go ahead and go back from this button here on top, place down another row of six of barrier blocks back. We're going to place down three buttons on the side of the first three, and then three buttons on top of the last three. Then going up from this uh, button here, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of four. That's going to go back two buttons on the side of these first two blocks here and two buttons on top of the last two. Then we just want to very simply go to this block here from the previous row we did. So this last row is six. We're going to place down a button on the side here of this block. Then we're going to place down one block that goes down from it. Bear, or a stone button on the side there. And then coming down to this barrier block here, we're just going to go ahead and go, ahead and go to the top of it. And we're going to place down a stone button on top of it like so. And that will be for this cable here. And that right there is going to kind of complete your cabling. Now when it comes to the vertical stabilizer, we're going to go ahead and go to our second polished anti block here. We're going to place down a block on top of it, and then one, two, three blocks back to so have a total of four. On top of the second block here, we're going to place down an air polished anti block, then one, two back, and then a light gray stained glass pane on the end. On top of this block, we're going to place down a light gray stained glass pane, then one, two, three polished anti blocks back, then a light gray stained glass pane on top of this block here, then one, two blocks back, and then an air light gray stained glass pane. And then a light gray stainless paint on top of this block here, then two polished anti blocks back, and then we're just going to place down two iron trap doors on top there like so. We also want to go ahead and grab our red star banner, and we're going to place it down the side of this polished anti block as well for that tail marking. At this point in time, for our uh, horizontal stabilizers, uh, we'll go ahead and grab our materials you can see here. And we're going to go and start off by placing down a light gray carpet on top of this iron trap door. Then we're going to go and go back from it two iron trap doors, and then two light gray carpet. Our next row is going to be a light gray carpet here, two iron trap doors, and then a light, one light gray carpet on the end. We then want to place down two daylight detectors, turn these to night mode on top of those iron trap doors, and then a iron trap door back. Then come off this daylight detector here, we're going to place down a second one, and then one more back, and then we're going to go ahead and place down, or turn these daylight detectors there to night mode. Then we're going to place down a polished anti slab, come off the side here of this one, and then a Daylight detector back, turn this to night mode, and then an iron trap over there in that corner. And then lastly, come off this uh, daylight detector here, we're going to place down a polished anti slab, and come off the slab, we're going to place down a chain, like that, going back for your horizontal stabilizers. And after that's all complete there, that is going to pretty much wrap up what we have there for layers 7 through 12 of the build. And with that, that is your in flight model there for the IL 28 Beagle. At this point in time now, we'll be going ahead and moving on to the landed version. So we'll be showing you guys how to put the landing gear onto the aircraft in a uh, kind of modified type of uh, situation. But yeah, that right there is it for the in-flight version, and let's move on to the landing gear. All right guys, so when it comes to the landing gear, the landing gear is pretty simple for this build. To kind of go ahead and get started with here, we want to go ahead and go to this bottom section here of the aircraft. We're gonna go ahead and replace this polished anti block that's between those glass panes. We're gonna go and delete that block and place down a stone brick wall in its place. We're gonna go ahead and then place down one more stone brick wall down, then a stone brick top slab on the bottom here, and then we just wanna place down a block of coal to both sides of that block. Or, and then after this point, we do have this banner design that we're going to use. Now this right here is a light gray banner that has a black border and then a black horizontal line for the center. This right here will be placed on the side of the stairs like so. And it will kind of help just kind of create a more flushed out wheel design. At this point here, we're going to go then delete this uh, polished anti block as well as this one right here. We're going to go ahead and then place down a birchwood fence gate in this spot like this. And we're going to have this open up toward the wall like so. Then on the inside here, kind of going with a uh, Soviet uh, aircraft in general, typically how they used to have them, we're going to go ahead and do a green inside here with placing down prismarine top slabs across the inside like so. Um, at this point here, we're going to go ahead and take our polished anti top slabs. We're going to place down two top slabs underneath these two stairs here, and those will be on both sides here for the landing gear doors that would open up. And that right there is pretty much it for your front wheel. With that, we'll be going ahead and now moving back to our rear wheels. All right, guys, so moving to our rear landing gear. For our rear landing gear, we'll be going ahead and dropping down to this section here. We're going to go ahead and delete this first top slab here and then the full block above it. We're going to go ahead and place down a stone brick wall and then one more that comes down like so. 
We're going to go then place down a stone brick top slab like this underneath that stone brick wall. And we're going to then place down a polished black stone upstairs stair here. Then a stair on top of that. We're going to then delete this iron trap door. Place down two stairs on the back there of those um, blocks like that. Then once we have that done, we're going to then delete this polished anti top slab as well as this one right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the inside here. We're going to delete these two full blocks. And we're going to go ahead and place down our prismarine, uh, our dark prismarine top slabs like so on the inside there. And we then want to go off these two iron trap doors. We're going to place down two inside walls. We're going to go ahead and place down levers. They're going to be flicked downwards. Um, like so. These iron trap doors may open up. If they do open up, we'll just go ahead and kind of delete them. Like so. Uh, but yeah, you're going to have your um, levers that look like that. Now after that's done, uh, we can go ahead and then go to the air side here. And we're going to go ahead and replace these two iron trap doors here with polished anti side up sound stairs. So one, two... Like that, or you can use the inside walls as well. Maybe inside walls, because it kind of fits it better. So, yeah, we'll just place down two inside walls there, like so. Now, after that, uh, pretty much the last thing to do here is to go ahead and take these banner designs we have. Now, this right here is using a black banner. You're going to go ahead and do a um, vertical, light gray line on the right side and on the left side of the banner. Then you just want to take your black. You're going to do a line across the top of black and line across the bottom for both banners. And that will create these two banners here, which we're going to place on the side here of this wheel like that to go ahead and kind of create a, again, a more detailed looking wheel. And we can also place down a banner on the inside here as well. We'll place down the banner there so that the light gray is facing toward the middle there of that uh, wheel shape. And with that all done, that is going to pretty much complete your rear landing gear. And with that, that is going to complete the landing gear for the build. You'll just take this to same design and copy it over to the air side and you'll be good to go. But with that, that's going to wrap up my tutorial here for the IL-28 Beagle. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this build and are able to put it to good use. If you do abuse this build, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This can be anything from the side of the build to a link to my channel or this video if this does bring any social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, your free user for a project you guys are working on overall. Enjoy the build, have fun with it, and all that fun stuff. With that though, um, again, a big special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. And as always, feel free to check my Patreon page. Again, link is always in my video descriptions. Um, with that... Thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary204, and I'll see you guys next time.